Uh, we're also, of course, tracking the dev devastation caused by Hurricane Ida, which made landfall late yesterday. Uh, one of the hardest hit areas of the country is uh, a part of southeastern Louisiana known as Lafouche Parish. And Captain uh, Brennan Mathurin from the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office is joining us now on the Scott Sancho from uh, the town of Galliano because you had to evacuate. You, you weren't able to stay in your hometown. Well, actually, I, if, if it makes any sense, I actually came south. Uh, my, I, my house is in the central part of the parish, and uh, we, I actually came south to, uh, you can see behind me the maps, uh, I'm in the Port Fouchon Administration Office. Uh, we're actually in their meeting room right now. Uh, now, we're not in Port Fouchon. We're in Galliano, uh, a few miles north of the port where uh, Ida made landfall, but uh, this uh, in here in this office in Galliano and just below us in the Golden Meadow area, uh, we did experience the eastern side of the eye wall for several hours yesterday, just relentlessly pounding us uh, with those category four uh, winds and rain. And uh, this part of the building is practically the only usable part left uh, at this office in Galliano. Yeah, I've, I've explained uh, every time a major storm comes ashore and earlier on the, the show today, we had the mayor of Gulfport, Mississippi on with us, and, and we were explaining that it's that northeastern quadrant of a hurricane that's the, the most dangerous, the most deadly, produces the, the highest storm surge. So you were there in the eastern eye wall uh, and, and Port Fouchon down to the south, that entire area of the state. You know, you, you often remember images of New Orleans after Katrina, that flooding not necessarily caused directly by Hurricane Katrina as much as it was levee failures in the city of New Orleans sitting inside of a bowl below sea level around Lake Pontchartrain and the Mississippi River. But when you get further south to Plaquemine Parish and, and, uh, and Lafouche Parish, where you are in Port Fouchon, uh, you're entirely underwater and that whole area uh, essentially marshland by you. Yeah, Port Fouchon and just north of that in Leeville uh, has no levee protection whatsoever. I mean, they are just completely exposed to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we were sitting in here and, and looking at videos of the port while Ida was coming in. And uh, I've, I've been here in the parish for Hurricanes Katrina and Gustav uh, in 05 and 08 and, and obviously everything in between. Uh, and I had never seen anything like that. Uh, just the, the monstrosity of the winds uh, and the waves just pounding in. Uh, at one point, uh, we estimate, uh, just based on rough estimates of the facilities that we were looking at, uh, 15 feet of water in Port Fouchon at one point. Uh, but uh, that was the port. Uh, we're in Galliano, uh, and, and again, we're in the southern end of the parish, so right below us in Golden Meadow is where uh, we're inside of a ring levee system that we actually taxed ourselves and built ourselves and it has withstood uh, over the years we, we've obviously added to it uh, but uh, again Katrina and Gustav and all the storms in between and now for this category four storm uh, our own little Cajun built levee uh, you, you know was <laughs> able to withstand the storm surge now inside uh, while we have no storm surge and flooding to speak of uh, the the catastrophic damage from the winds is is just uh, unbelievable. Uh, I have not been able to venture out too much. Uh, I've, I've, I've gone about two miles uh, from this location, and that that was enough uh, for, for one day. Uh, just every structure uh, in the southern area has some level of damage. Uh, some structures are completely demolished. Does it look like it was mainly wind damage or, or, or damage caused by the storm surge? When you look at, at pictures of, say, the Mississippi Gulf Coast after Katrina, what people don't realize is that was all storm surge damage. Uh, that entire uh, one mile area inland from the, the, the Gulf Coast from the beaches wiped, uh, wiped away because of the storm surge. Uh, friends' houses just completely destroyed. And, and the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, lucky this time, uh, just uh, uh, you know, dozens of miles make that much of a difference. Uh, unfortunately, that also means that, that your area, Plaquemine, uh, New Orleans, uh, up into Bay St. Louis and, and the Pearl River area of Mississippi, uh, took the brunt of the storm, and, and it's continuing to be a pretty destructive storm, uh, producing a lot of rainfall, a very well-defined hurricane that uh, intensified quickly as it was coming ashore, maybe to the surprise of some of you. I mean, I, I don't remember seeing a lot of images of, of evacuations out of New Orleans to the Gulf Coast. Were, were people able to get out of, of Lafouche Parish and, and Plaquemine Parish out, out of the furthest southern parts of the state? 
Yes, uh, we we thankfully called a, a mandatory parish-wide evacuation early enough for those who wanted to. Unfortunately, we estimate that uh, you know not obviously not everyone left, and and maybe just over fifty percent of the residents left, and that's partly because it's so rare that we call a parish-wide evacuation, uh, despite the fact that we live on the coast. Um, and, and we see our fair share of storms in the northern area of our parish is about 90 minutes away from Port Fouchon. Uh, so the, the, when you get a storm in Port Fouchon, it's just not the same in the city of Thibodeau at the northern end of the parish. Now they got pounded, uh, but, but certainly not to the level that we see the destruction in the southern end. Uh, Port Fouchon and Leeville, to your point uh, earlier, uh, did sustain uh, a lot of damage. In fact, we haven't even been able to get back in that area yet uh, from storm surge as well as winds. Uh, only 17 people, 17 to 20 people live in the Leeville area. Uh, other than that, it's mostly fishing camps and businesses uh, all the way into Port Fouchon. But obviously Port Fouchon is a huge hub here for oil and gas. And, and the uh, sh uh, ship uh, service industry. So ultimately, we haven't even been able to get down there. Uh, LA-1, we have seen pictures. Is, there's parts of LA-1 that have simply washed away. Uh, so we're going to, until we get beyond the levee system and actually see what we're dealing with, uh, we won't even be able to speak about uh, Port Fouchon and, and the destruction there. No, all of the destruction that we're seeing is, is wind-based destruction for the most part. Uh, and, and it's from Golden Meadow all the way up to Thibodeau, especially bad in the central area of the parish where the eye actually passed directly over. And they, uh, we do have a little bit of flooding in the northern area of our parish, just to the northeast of our parish in an area called Bayou Buff that's just to the east of the city of Thibodeau. A levee did breach there. That Those levees are a lot lower than, than the levees in the southern area. And about 50 residents had to be evacuated overnight. Uh, we, we have no communication, uh, virtually no communication. This is one of the only places with Wi-Fi, so I'm able to, to talk with people and have communication with the outside world. But communication within the parish is very limited, no cell phones, no phone lines. So I, I haven't been able to get full details of that uh, rescue mission last night, but we were able to get everyone out. You know, it, it's interesting you mentioned that. I, I was commenting earlier that I have not seen any, any images from your area coming in. We're getting reports obviously out of New Orleans and out of the Gulf Coast and from Homa and Baton Rouge, but we're not hearing anything or seeing anything from the, the southeastern part of Louisiana. And I think when we see those images, it's going to be uh, utterly devastating. Uh, Captain Brennan, Brennan Mathern of the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office is here on the Scott Sand Show. What do you expect that your people will need? Uh, uh, what can we do to help? How can you recommend people from around the country get involved to, to help you? I think the, the question is, what don't we need at this point? Uh, and and that's that's why we're we're kind of uh, we're not moving slowly. We know that our our residents that have evacuated want to come back. We know that the residents are here uh, need to get going. Uh, I will tell you this, Scott. Uh, we have a resilient community, and I know you always hear that about South Louisiana and about the New Orleans area. Uh, but but it couldn't be more. true about us. Uh, we, we have a, a, a large Cajun culture uh, here in Lafouche Parish uh, that's all about helping your neighbor, all about hospitality. Uh, you, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, if there is a good side to working a storm, uh, we know that when people lose power and they know they're going to be without power for some time, man, they empty out their freezers and they start cooking for everybody in their neighborhood. They, they bring food to us. Uh, that's one of the perks, I guess, of living in, in such an, a fantastic community that, that appreciates their law enforcement. Uh, we love we love serving uh, the people of Lafouche. Uh, they're going to need a lot of help in the, in the coming days. Uh, we have no power throughout the whole parish. We have no running water. Uh, a lot of these people are gonna need to rebuild, but some are needed uh, clean. So cleaning supplies uh, is gonna be one of the, the first things on the list. That's the first thing people are gonna have to do. Uh, tarps, uh, obviously we're gonna get some help from, from uh, our, our state leadership and national leadership. Uh, but, you know, just those bare essentials of, of ice and tarps are the first things and cleaning supplies people are going to need uh, just to get started on that process. But, you know, you have people that are going to be rebuilding their whole lives. They're, the, the houses, you know, look like a bomb had gone off in their house. Uh, so they're going to need practically everything. Uh, our 
concern obviously is is financial support uh, because a lot of these families are in hotels right now somewhere else and they're going to come back and secure their property but they, they can't stay here i mean you can't even flush a toilet at this point so ultimately they're going to head back to wherever they were and and stick it out for at least a little while but they're going to start running out of money or, or their funds are going to get low enough that, that they can't afford to do that uh so at this point uh, you know we we've already seen anxiety high and tensions high uh, in the people that have stayed, and that's just going to increase as more and more people come back. Uh, so what, what our folks need is a lot of patience, but we do need all, any and all support and help that we can get. Uh, we would certainly appreciate that. Captain Brennan Mathurin from the LaFouche Parish Sheriff's Office. You talked about that resiliency and that spirit of cooperation that the people of South Louisiana have. Uh, we often hear talking, in fact, uh, under my, my uh, iHeartRadio shirt, I'm wearing a T-shirt from the Cajun Navy. Uh, the Cajun Navy out... Do we know how many people uh, that say need to be rescued? I heard a, a report uh, earlier today of one of the islands, maybe it was in Plaquemine Parish, uh, where the entire island has been cut off uh, because of a, a, a downed bridge. Do we know how many people, is there, a, are, is there a search and rescue operation underway? Have you been able to get out for that yet? I'm not familiar with that particular instance. I do know that, uh, so the, the town of Grand Isle, which is actually part of Jefferson Parish, is only accessible through Lafouche Parish. Uh, we have had no communication whatsoever uh, since early yesterday with Grand Isle. Uh, so so we're, we have no clue. And, and again, we can't get down there because, I'm, as I mentioned, we haven't been uh, beyond Golden Meadow at this point because we simply can't even get down to our own facilities in Port Fouchon, let alone to continue uh, going uh, southeast to, to Grand Isle. So uh, that is concerning for us because even though they're not part of Lafouche Parish, they're sort of our adopted brothers uh, there in Grand Isle, as we mentioned, even for Hurricane Katrina and Gustav, uh, we made sure that uh, we, we sort of adopted them there because uh, we knew that Jefferson really couldn't get to them and couldn't help them. So uh, they're like family, uh, all the families there. And look, a lot of our, our residents have uh, camps in, in Grand Isle as well. So it, it's a place that, that our people frequent often. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, we are looking forward to uh, having those communications back first and foremost so that we can at least communicate with each other internally, uh, but, but certainly so that people in and around our parish can can call us and contact us. I mean, our 911 lines are down right now. We've had to give out, believe it or not, two uh, cell phone numbers for people to call in emergency uh, services right now. Uh, so things are, are grim right now when it comes to communication. We are getting signs of life. Uh, AT&T and Verizon had almost total blackouts in our parish uh, just hours ago, and I've started getting messages for people with AT&T service. So that's that's promising. And Verizon's been spotty as well. So we're starting to see things come back slowly but surely, but very slowly. You, you talked about the oil industry, Port Fouchon, earlier. We, we also saw reports, and maybe you haven't even seen this, of, of several oil rigs in the Gulf that have come loose and are now floating free in the Gulf of Mexico. Have you heard any word of, of any potential spills or, or damage to, to the oil industry in that area? Well, just the mere fact that, that Port Fouchon was under, you know, uh, who knows how many feet of water and, and suffered the wind damage, I mean, that is going to be a humongous blow to the oil, oil and gas industry and the service industry. And, and, and I think we're definitely going to see the effects of the, the, those ramifications nationwide. Uh, Port Fouchon is a, a crucial part of the nation's oil and gas industry, uh, even though it's a place that probably most people hadn't heard of uh, before Ida hit. Uh, I, I think people will really know in, in the coming days uh, all about Port Fusho after they see the effects of this. Uh, hopefully it, it doesn't have too bad of an effect, uh, but just the fact that the port can't be open for, for this long, uh, the, the GDP is going to take a huge hit. Uh, in fact, every hour that it's closed, uh, the GDP takes a huge hit. Uh, so I think this, this will be felt and, and it'll become known in, in the coming days uh, how much this has really affected the nation. Uh, this, this little, old, uh, you know, not, not too well known port and how crucial they are to the nation's oil and gas industry. Captain Brennan Mathurin of the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office right there at ground zero from Hurricane Ida. I, I really appreciate your time, Captain. I know you're busy, and, and I don't mean to make light of the situation, but one of the stories that I continue to see uh, from friends of mine in Slidell in New Orleans uh, is, is that uh, a lot of warnings not to go walking around. There may be knee-deep, chest-deep water in some areas, in some neighborhoods. People are, are eager to get in and rescue as much of their personal goods as they can if they may not have been able to evacuate everything. But the warning is, don't go walking around because we got gators. We got snakes in the area that have been dislocated from the marshlands and the, the bayous. That, that's a serious problem in Louisiana. 
In fact, uh, I just heard a call over the radio moments ago uh, before this interview. Uh, we, we have a, a checkpoint at the floodgates uh, so that no one goes beyond them. And uh, there was a, a person who uh, arrived on foot looking for shelter, and they had no choice uh, but the officer and, and the individual to seek shelter in uh, his car for the moment because they were surrounded uh, by alligators uh, all around them. Uh, yeah, it, it, snakes and alligators are certainly going to be a concern. Uh, I guess the good news for us, uh, again, with, with the residential areas, other than the one we mentioned in Bayou Buff, not having those floodwaters, uh, we have seen uh, individuals walking around. And honestly, we don't really mind that. We know that they're just trying to clean up their property and check on their neighbors. What we don't want is people driving around. And uh, we know that people want to become internet famous during this time and get those uh, shots of all the damage. But the reality is it's just too dangerous to have people riding around. I mean, that's why we're not letting people back in our parish. Uh, so if you want to take those videos, uh, please do so on foot around your own property in your own neighborhood. Uh, check, but, but do so while checking on your neighbors and make sure that they don't need any help. And uh, if, there, if there's any uh, thing that we need to do, uh, please give us a call. Uh, but, but ultimately, uh, you know, just stay off the roads for now. Uh, we're working tirelessly uh, to get these roadways clear so that we can get people back to their homes. And we're going to publicized and help uh, give out as much information as we can for the people of Ohio and Michigan to, to help you in, in Southeast Louisiana. I want you to stay safe, Captain. I, I really appreciate your time. I know you're so busy, uh, but stay safe and give all of our best to the rest of uh, the Sheriff's Office. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate it. Thank you so